hello there. First, gonna start off <laughs> by I don't want to lie. I'm not a liar. Um, it is currently 2:54 a.m. You know what? Quarantine has just really gave me a great sleeping schedule. Honestly, like I've never been better. My mental health is great. Everything is just really good because of my sleeping schedule. Honestly, and I have quarantine to thank for it. So really good. I also like to do full faces of makeup um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, so the more you know, honestly. But besides that, also before we start this YouTube review, I do, I did work on another piece. Um, I don't have it downstairs with me, it's upstairs because I gave it to my sister, so I'll put like a picture of it right here. It's little Guy Fieri, Fieri, Ferrari however you say that dude's name. Um, my sister loves him, so she wanted me to paint him, so I, I did that. Um, that's pretty much been it. This is a YouTube review, um, duh. <laughs> and today we're gonna be talking about a play called The Baltimore Waltz that we just finished in my class because Zoom University, we're thriving. I thought I heard a noise. We're not dealing with ghosts right now. The play is written by Paula Vogel. It's based on her and her brother's, or her and her brother's experience with AIDS because he was diagnosed with AIDS and died due to complications of it um, before they had this big European vacation planned. So she decided to write this play in kind of like a funny way, funny but also like sad way, <laughs> as like an, to honor her brother and their experiences. The play was written in 1989. Um, it had a, a workshop at the Perseverance Theater in 1990. It was first staged at Houston's Alley Theater in 1992, and then it made its off-Broadway premiere in later that year. So we're gonna talk about the actual story. We love you, Paula, but we gotta get into the Baltimore Waltz. That's what we came here to see. So th the play is about Anna and Carl, and it appears that they're going on this big European vacation to get the cure to um, Anna's diagnosis of A. TD, yeah, Autom autoimmune like toilet disease or something like that. It's kind of what it seems like. Is they're on this big European Euro European vacation filled with like funny little things uh, to cure Anna's sickness when really it's not. So the main characters are Anna and Carl and they're their brother and sister, and then there's the third man who plays all these different characters that they meet. The doctor, all I can think about off the top of my head is the little Dutch boy at age 50. Um, he plays a variety of different roles throughout the play and he interacts with Carl and Anna in certain ways. The overall theme, there's a bunch of them. Um, it's definitely overcoming and accepting, you know, death and loss, um, accepting realities of the world. There's the, you know, the dynamic of a relationship between a brother and a sister, as well as dealing with grief and guilt. Throughout the play, like I said, there's a variety of different characters that are played by the third man and they interact with Anna and Carl throughout. Each one has a different character function, so I have them all written down, I'm going to read them off and like explain them. So obviously Anna's the protagonist, and throughout the whole play she's trying to understand Carl. Anna knows that her brother is gay, and she sleeps with all these men and does all these things to try and understand his... Um, homosexuality so her whole the whole play is just about her trying to understand Carl and his way there's the mentors or mentor sorry there's the public health official who um, is in the beginning and he's the one that talks to Anna and Carl about Anna's diagnosis of ATD the automatic toilet disease an autoimmune toilet disease one of those again too lazy to look it up it's fine then there's the threshold guardian and there's a few, there's the security guard, there's the customs official, and then there's the concierge at the end of the play. Um, there's the herald, who's the doctor. He's the one that gives them the function for the whole play. He's the one that tells them, you know, you need to go see this doctor to get the cure. So he's the one that gives them a purpose for the whole play, pretty much. Then there's the shapeshifters, there's a lot of them, which these are pretty much not all of them, well, yeah, the majority of them are the people that Anna slept with, and each person that she sleeps with, she kind of gets more and more 
um, comfortable with her sexuality and intimacy and you know stuff like that. Yeah, so you got the garçon who he's the first one that she has sex with so he's like the teacher of sex and he's like yeah you do this like yeah you're good you're good, good. do that. Mm -hmm. Then there's the little Dutch boy. He's He shows a very different version of sex and love to Anna. There's the Munich virgin who makes Anna like the dominant one, who's the one that's like, you you do this, you know, and instead of being the one told what to do, that's basically what dominant means. I don't know why I had to explain it, but we did. There's the radical student activist who made Anna, Anna blah, 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 who made Anna feel sexually radical. And then there's Harry Lyon, who he was Carl's love interest. In the end, you find out, but he takes away Carl's rabbit, which is sad. Then there's the shadow, which is Carl. I keep hearing people walking upstairs and I'm not doing this. There's so many downstairs. Maybe there's not, I think I'm going crazy. I think I've been in the house way too long and my sister was way too messed up and I'm just going crazy. Anyways, the shadow. So the shadow's Carl and it's the thing that Anna wants to understand. And then the other shadow is Dr. Todish Todish Rishlon. Todish Todish Rishlon. Todish Rishlon. Close enough. And last but not least is the trickster, who's the concierge. He's also a trick he's a trickster threshold guardian, and he is the one that tells them like Harry Lime's dead. But in reality he's not. You know what I'm saying? Okay. One of the main like the one of the major like images in the play is Carl's rabbit that he carries around with him. It's this little stuffed rabbit. So the rabbit represents a lot of different things and they change constantly throughout the play. In the beginning, the bunny rabbit, it, re it, uh, la, 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 it represents innocence. And then like when they are trying to go over the border to get into Europe, um, Anna is the one that has to smuggle the rabbit in because Carl he wouldn't be able to he wouldn't be allowed to travel because back when AIDS was all happening a, a people that were diagnosed with AIDS were not allowed to travel they were banned so that kind of represents that little thing the rabbit starts to represent people that are gay like during this a lunch scene she's like oh that guy's waving his rabbit at you so like if you're gay you have a rabbit the rabbit starts to give Anna sexual power with these men the rabbit is also like intimacy and Carl's childhood, all his fears, the rabbit's who Carl is. Then they get to Harry Lyme in the end who's supposed to have the cure for Anna's imaginary disease. He he says he doesn't have it and so he ends up stealing Carl's rabbit away and so what we kind of figure out is that Carl and Harry Lyme had a relationship and they went to um, grad school together and they had a relationship and Carl like fell in love with Harry and so by Harry stealing Carl's rabbit, he's like taking away his soul and like breaking his heart even more. But yeah, it's it's very, very crazy. I personally, I, I liked the play. I think it was a very um, interesting way that it was written. Um, the way that, you know, Paula created this, this fake diagnosis to kind of, oh, my head is just, the way that Paula wrote it is in a way for like Anna to art for Paula to understand her brother having AIDS. Um, it's kind of like her being diagnosed with AIDS, but like flipped with, with an imaginary disease. Did that make sense? Like I don't know how to explain it. It was just very um, not creative, but very like I don't know. I don't really know the word for it. It's it was very interesting. I would say how she was able to write it like that. I think resonated with me the most. And I think then towards the end when, you know, you thought that they were going on this big European adventure, but then in the end you realize that no, like they didn't even leave the hospital bed because then it shows that, you know, Carl dying of AIDS, all just like that never, like they never even went on a trip. I think that, like I said, I liked the story. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of confused at a lot of parts. <laughs> um, I think that, and that might just be me being dumb. Um, I think also it was very hard to concentrate on this play because we are in Zoom University, so I wasn't like physically sitting there, like, you know what I mean? I don't really know. I don't know. But like I said, like I think that the way that it was set up was very clever. That's the freaking word. Was very clever. 
on Paula's part. I think the main thing is like you have to put your uh, my bangs. You have to, ma'am. I think the main thing is like showing you don't know how somebody's feeling or you don't know how somebody is reacting to things unless you take a step in their shoes. And I think that's what the whole play is about is that Anna slash Paula took a step in Carl's slash her brother's shoes to see how he was feeling throughout the whole entire like his diagnosis of AIDS and him dealing with the side effects of it and then ultimately the complications that led to his death. I would recommend this play. I don't really know. I think to anybody, I think I think it shows really that like brother and sister dynamic. So I think anybody that has siblings, I think anybody can read it. I think that there's a lot of different messages in it that would resonate with a lot of different people and it doesn't really matter what like you're going through, you can still get something from it. I would say obviously more mature, like older people read it, not not youngins because there's a lot of stuff that happens in it. But yeah, I don't know. I think people would really like it. I, you know, I think it gives them a different perspective on like I said, walk, taking taking a walk in somebody else's shoes. I think also it would give people more of like an insight into the AIDS epidemic and how um, people were treated as well as how they were seen, how, you know, homosexuals were seen as kind of, it sounds really bad, but like you, you, like when people would have AIDS, I think people would just judge them like, oh, you did this to yourself. Like, you know, you deserve this and all that stuff. I think this play kind of shows more that nobody deserved that you know you know what i'm saying like i just i think that it's it'll be it would be an eye opener to a lot of people yeah so that is pretty much it yeah i don't really know there's there's nothing else really to talk about um i'm probably gonna take some melatonin <laughs> and go to bed because it's already 3 a.m and and i have rehearsal tomorrow <laughs> yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed this video so I'm an idiot and I completely forgot to do the best part of these reviews and give it a rating. So I would definitely give this play four dirty toilets out of five. There you go. Thank you. I'll see you guys either next week or in a few weeks. Depends on whatever play we're reading next. I don't know, but we will see. I will still be in quarantine. And yeah, so have a great morning. And I will see you guys soon.